great. I was slightly worried when I saw what the temperature was going to be like on today because I thought I might have to cut down my sermon because people will get hot and bothered and, and all of that. But then we've just had a water cooler put in the back. So it's going to be an hour and a half today, <laughs> which is great for you. Someone said hallelujah. That was very kind, but not really honest. <laughs> who, am I to, who am I to judge? I'm so sorry. Cool. Well, uh, we've got some, we're continuing our um, sermon series on the big ask on prayer. We've been preaching through it two weeks ago. Hills preached big last week, as you know. Tim preached long. (laughs) And uh, this week I'll be preaching confidently. (laughs) We're talking about praying confidently, which should be interesting. Might be a little painful at times. But I think ultimately it's positive. Prayer is quite a complex subject. We're going to get into it um, immediately. So where does our confidence lie when, when it comes to praying, praying to God, when it comes to our conversation with God, with our Heavenly Father? How can we be confident? I don't know about you, but as soon as I saw that, pray confidently, I kind of had a whole lot of questions. What can we be confident about when it comes to prayer? I'm sure you've all got a catalogue of prayers that you've been praying, important prayers that you think, I don't know that God's answered that as I thought he would. Where does that leave us when it comes to confidence? And hopefully that's some of the territory we're going to navigate a little bit. But we're going to look at where our confidence can lie. And so first I want to say our confidence is in our approach. We can confidently approach God. And that is one of the most important things. When Jesus spoke about how to pray, he said, pray like this, our Father. I mean, what a great way to start a prayer if you're wanting to pray something confident, pray boldly, pray with belief. Start by acknowledging who we are. We're children, and he is our Father. That's a great place to start. We have confidence in approach. It's not... uh, a grumpy headmaster in the sky who we have to convince to do good things. We're not all of a twist going, please, sir, can I have some more? With a kind of response of more? How greedy are you? God is our loving Heavenly Father. We can approach him with confidence. We can ask him big things. We can pray big kingdom prayers as we're being called to this week because we're praying to our Father. Ephesians 3.12, if we can have that on the screen. In him and through him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And Hebrews 4.16 also says, we can approach the throne with confidence. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, and I'm not going to labor on this, but because of the blood of the Lamb, we can come to God confidently. We can approach him confidently. We don't have to worry that we might get Uh, lightning struck or stoned or anything like that we can approach God with confidence we can also be the second point is we can we can be confident in God's ability there's a definite area of confidence he is our creator healer he is all powerful he created the earth and Ephesians 3 20 talks about God being able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine That's who we're approaching. So when it comes to prayer, we can be confident in God's ability. I remember reading when I was dating the lovely Karis. She was at Cambridge. I was on a train heading to see her for a weekend. Um, And I'd been reading about Jesus saying, if you believe whatever you ask for in prayer, you'll receive. That kind of inspired me. That's pretty exciting. And another part in the Bible where where Jesus talks about, "If if you have faith enough, you can say to this tree, be uprooted, and planted in the sea. And I was like, okay, God, I really know you. I've walked with you for a while now. I trust that you can actually do this. So I'm I'm, I'm on this train, and I look at one of these trees, and I'm just like, right, right tree. (laughs) Me and you, come on. Well, me, you, and God, okay, just just to clarify. I was like, be uprooted. Like, I was just, I I had this moment of faith. I was like, I want to practice this faith. Be uprooted. I was delayed on the return back because there were trees on the line. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, that is the exact truth. Was it that tree? I don't know. And uh, did I regret praying it? Maybe. <laughs> but there is one thing. We can be confident in God. And that's a small thing. But we can, I believe we can be confident in a God who heals limbs, who heals hearts, who knows what you're going through, who can take away depression, who can handle the biggest problems in your world. We can be confident in God's ability. We can be confident in our approach of God, confident in ability, But can we be confident in application? Can we be confident in what happens when we pray big prayers, when we pray long prayers, when we pray boldly and confidently? Can we be confident of what that looks like? And I think in short, to cut the sermon really short, no. Thank you. No, we can't. And you know what? I've wrestled with this for the last four weeks. No, we can't. I'm speaking to a whole group of people, and you've prayed some important prayers. We're not talking selfish prayers. The Bible corrects people who want to pray about their own desires. It's like when you ask, you don't get because you're asking for your own pleasures. It talks about that in James. I'm not talking here about people in this building and listening to this talk who have prayed selfish prayers. I'm I'm talking about people who have seen pain that's going on in their family, in their nation, and they've prayed big prayers and bold prayers and haven't seen an answer or don't understand God's response. And that is difficult. That is challenging. I'm going to just look briefly at Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways My ways, declares the Lord. There's something about perspective when it comes to praying with confidence. We have to understand that we aren't God, but we are praying to God. And there is a very painful element of surrender when it comes to praying confidently. We're praying, your will be done, God. Your will be done. There's a great book on prayer by Timothy Keller. It was three pound off in this particular bookstore. I don't know what how much it's going to be for you, but um, I'd really encourage you to get this. There's, there's a whole wealth of, of stuff in here. I'm just going to read one little quote, if I may. And this is Timothy Keller talking about how we can pray God's will. Unless we are profoundly certain God is our Father, we will never be able to say, Thy will be done. Fathers are often inscrutable to little children. A four-year-old cannot understand many of his father's prohibitions, but he trusts him. Only if we trust God as Father can we ask for grace to bear our troubles with patience and grace. We're talking about our Father. As Jesus tells us to pray, we start with our Father, and then we have to pray, your will be done. We have to pray that, and we have to trust that God, we have to trust God with our deepest desires. Um, I was feeding Ben, who's one, as some of you might have noticed this morning. I was feeding him um, this week. Pasta, cheesy pasta, he loves cheesy pasta. And then I'd optimistically put on his plate some cucumber and tomatoes. He was very sure of what he wanted. And he was groaning confidently. Uh, he's not got words yet, so he's just, he just looks at what he wants and goes, uh, 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 uh. and I'm here going, okay, here's a little bit of cucumber. And then he just slaps it down, slides it off the thing, and it goes on the floor. And I know he doesn't laugh, but inside, he's won again. And I am just <laughs> losing. But I know cucumber is best for him. I know he can't survive on just pasta. Alone, but what he thinks he needs right now is cheesy pasta, cheesy pasta, cheesy pasta. So, what happens when it comes to a broken confidence? What happens when we are broken in our confidence? And I think I'm probably speaking to a a large number of people here this morning who have perhaps prayed really important prayers. And you've really believed, you've really known that God, yes, you can do this. I know you can heal this 
person. I know these children don't have to grow up without a father. I know that it's possible for you to, inter- to, 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 to move in this situation. And yet things don't happen. And we experience devastating effects of prayers that didn't achieve the results that we might have expected. And so what do we do when we have a broken confidence? I want us to turn, if we can, just to Psalm 77, because I found this to be profoundly helpful. This psalmist seems to have gone through stuff that I haven't gone through, seems to have wrestled with God in a way that I haven't yet, and seems to have found some way of regaining confidence in prayer. Um, And I'm just going to read through it. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and my soul refused to be comforted. Nighttime can be a hard time when prayers are unanswered. I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? I wonder if you can hear your own voice in this, your own questions as I read. Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? All these questions coming from that deep place of prayer. And then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. Sometimes when it comes to confidence in prayer, we have to engage our memory and sometimes we have to go back a long way when we've been going through a hard time. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Can you see this person? Regaining confidence as they pray. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So this particular person, as they write, reminds themselves of what God has done. So often when it comes to prayer, we have question marks and dot, dot, dots in our lives. There is not yet a conclusion to this thing that we were hoping for. We haven't yet seen the end. And I would encourage you not to draw your own conclusions until God has drawn his. Don't draw your own conclusions until God has drawn his. God is a good, good father. And so if circumstances don't look good, it's not the end. It's not the end. The psalmist at the end here talks about the parting of the Red Sea. He remembers back to a time when God's people were so trapped and stuck between a sea and an angry army. And God made a way. God made a way. And so, as we meditate on what God has done, our confidence is rebuilt for what he could do, for what might be next. Hebrews 11 talks about a whole bunch of people who had faith. They had confidence in God, being sure of what they hoped for and certain of what they do not see. They had confidence 
in a huge amount. And, and this, is a list of, this is a list of some of the all-time greats of the Bible and what they did. And it says they were all commended for their faith, yet none received what had been promised in this life. And there's a reality to our confidence in God that ultimately, ultimately our prayers are fully answered in heaven. And sometimes we have to wait until then to understand fully the conclusion that God would have. Okay. How are we doing? It's a little bit painful, some of this stuff. I'm aware that there are prayers on your heart. And I'm just saying, get back to some of the stuff God has done. Come back to some of the stuff where you did see a breakthrough, where you, the, port, the, the waters were parted. And let's restore our confidence in a big God and in a loving Father that we can approach and who has ability. So how do we pray confidently? How do we pray confidently? Uh, we're going to play a little game just to make sure that you're all still awake. I don't know if ever, anyone's ever heard of Simon Says. Okay. You have and some of you really like it by the looks of it. Okay. Simon Says, clap twice. Simon Says, clap four times. Simon Says, rub your tummy. Simon Says, stand up if you're able to. Simon says, pat your head. Simon says, clap twice. Okay, you can sit down. Oh, oh. Some people are sat down now going, oh, I really wanted to get that right. I've been doing this since I was five and I failed again. Okay, Simon says you can sit down. Simon says you can continue listening to the sermon. Three little points that I want to finish on when it comes to praying confidently. If we want to pray confidently, pray God's will. Pray God's will. There's patterns of prayer in the Bible. The Lord's Prayer is a great one. Pray God's will. But you might need to have a conversation, to have some connection time, to pray God's will. Don't do something if God hasn't said it. If God isn't saying it through the Bible, through, um, through, the people, through God's witnesses around you, if he hasn't said it and hasn't given a promise, then it's possible, but it's not necessarily promised when it comes to God's ability. It's possible, but it might not be promised. So pray God's will. Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do it. And let's remember that Jesus' name isn't something we add on the end of a prayer for a Ferrari to make it count in Jesus name is in, in, in likeness with the tradition of Christ in line with his will we're praying in line with his will so pray God's will and I would encourage you to read God's word read God's word read about all the things that God has done the Bible is a huge resource to us when it comes to Stories. Do you know who some of the best prayers are in this church? I'm not going to point them out because that would be rude. And actually they're all across the road. Some of the best prayers are the kids of this church who are surrounded by big, big stories of a big, big God against big lions and big giants and big seas. But they don't have the experience of unanswered prayer. So they're just going at it boldly to a loving father and not trying to question all the other stuff. Surround yourself with big stories of a big God and see if confidence doesn't rise in the way that you're praying. That's what the psalmist did in Psalm 77. He reflected on what God had done. Surround yourselves with testimonies. Find podcasts with stuff that God is doing and God is up to. Fill your library with resources of God's provision. So pray God's will, read God's word, and finally, trust God's ways. Trust God's ways. And that's the hard part of praying confidently, that we cannot presume to know how God is going to apply our prayers. We cannot presume to know exactly what that's going to look like, exactly what a big ask of a big God is going to result in. 
another great book on prayer by Mark Batterson. It's called The Circle Maker. And there's a chapter on no answer. And he says this, some of the hardest moments in life are when you've prayed hard, but the answer is no, and you don't know why. And you may never know why, but that is the litmus test of trust. Do you trust that God is for you even when he doesn't give you what you asked for? Do you trust that he has reasons beyond your reason? And do you trust that his plan is better than yours? Those are not straightforward questions, are they? They are not straightforward questions. But God calls us to trust. He calls us to surrender. He calls us to connection. I love the story of uh, Peter in the boat. Here's someone who's confident. He stands in the boat and he sees this ghost-like character who he's, he's, he thinks is Jesus and he says, if it is you, call me to come out on the water. If it is you, call me to come out of the, the water. He wants to know it's God's will. He wants to know it's God's will. This, it wasn't Jesus' idea. It wasn't ever a, a Jesus plan. He was just so confident of God that he starts to create his own crazy prayers. And that's what we want to be as a family of God. We want to be expecting huge things of a huge God and saying, God, it would be ridiculous for me to walk on water. But if it's your will, we want to go there. We want to believe for it. And we want to do that. That's where we want to be living. That's where we want to be moving in. And prayer is the foundation of that. But we cannot pray confidently if we're not praying connectedly. We cannot pray confidently if we're not praying connectedly. And so, Jesus says the most ridiculous thing. He says, come. He says to a guy in his sandals and his fishing boat, come, while he's standing on the waves. But he said it. He said it. There's an invitation to the crazy, to the confident, to the bold. And perhaps Peter in that instant didn't necessarily trust God's ways and it didn't all go right. We have to continue to trust God's ways. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish there because I think it would be great to do some praying. I think it would be great to do some redeeming. And I think God wants to, well, I think God wants to touch us 